dear marvel fans this is marvel girl finally my favorite time of the month happy halloween guys so today we are going to talk about the history of shadow king now the shadow king has been a long time enemy of the x men and has done everything in his power to try and take them down mostly because he got owned by professor x from the very beginning The Shadow King is apparently a multiversal manifestation of the dark side of human consciousness, spawned by the very first nightmare when a mutant named Amal Farooq's powers developed. Farooq physically controlled everyone around him, feeding on the shadows and their soul. Secretly merging with the Shadow King, the Shadow King had used Farooq's power to use him as his next host because he had been transferring from host to host due to the fact that no one could contain his power and he had been doing this since the dawn of humanity. Using these powers, the Shadow King as Farooq eventually became a crime lord in Egypt, controlling all of the Cairo Steve's quarters. The Shadow King had many people under his psychic grasp. and one of these people was the young mutant ororo later to be known as storm while professor x was in cairo storm pickpocketed his wallet professor x was able to use his powers to find her and get his wallet back but he was struck by a psychic bolt of energy when professor x regained consciousness he realized that the source of psychic bolt had come from a tavern nearby And when he entered the tavern he sat down and waited for his new psychic enemy to reveal himself to him That is when Professor X met the Shadow King as Farooq for the first time Farooq told him that he had sensed another telepath nearby and that the blast was a warning to Professor X Then he told him that they should join forces and that together there was nothing they couldn't do But Professor Xavier knew that people with gifts like these should use them for good and try to better the world, not to enslave people. Denying the Shadow King, they both took their astral forms and began an epic psionic battle. At first, Professor Xavier was dumbfounded by how much psionic energy Farooq had to waste to change the setting of the astral plane and don armor. Even the attack on the psychic plane from Farooq were enough to actually harm Professor X in the physical world. Professor Xavier knew that he couldn't be fooled through normal methods, so he had to wait and by this time as the Shadow King began to reveal more and more of his true nature to Professor Xavier, eventually Professor X was able to let out a fatal psionic attack which destroyed the Shadow King and due to this Farooq's body in physical world slammed onto the table with no one the wiser of what had just happened Professor Xavier realized that he was going to need a team of people to fight against evil mutants in the world and this led him to the idea of X-Men what Professor Xavier did in new was that Farooq aka the Shadow King had survived and was waiting on the astral plane for the revenge against Xavier but he was very fearful at how powerful Xavier was A few years later the Shadow King would return finding a new mutant named Karma. Karma had the ability to psychically possess other beings which actually made her an easier target for Shadow King. Possessing Karma and using her abilities, he was able to rebuild an entire worldwide empire. And of course because the Shadow King was such a golem He actually changed Karma's physical body to almost resemble that of his last foe, Farooq. I'm saying she got really fat. Now, the Shadow King used Karma's powers to control a group of mutants called the Gladiators, and he used the Gladiators to abduct X-Men named Magma and Hotspot. forcing them to fight each other until their teammates Cannonball, Shadowcat, Dazzler and Magic showed up and tried to rescue them. While they were in their battle to escape the gladiators, Cannonball and Shadowcat were able to recognize their obese friend Karma, but they had no idea that Karma was being controlled by the Shadow King. The team chased Karma to Mad Report where 
they were unfortunately affected by the karma's mind control which was incredibly enhanced by the power of the shadow king the rest of the new mutants and storm were able to fight their teammates in cairo but even then they weren't strong enough to shake off karma's control and she was able to pick mind control storm and mirage colossus his sister magic was able to realize that karma was being possessed by the shadow king and was able to free her teammates from karma's control as well as free karma from the shadow king's control the shadow king tried to run away and transfer to another mutant named cipher but karma was able to enter the astral plane and destroy his astral form destroying the shadow king once again the shadow king would appear again years later and possess the dead body of fbi agent jacob reyes the shadow king was looking for storm who had recently been sent back to childhood by the mutant nanny and woke up with amnesia the shadow king tries to find storm and even went as far as to kill a man and frame storm for the murder the shadow king would then travel to mirror island which was an island containing moira mctaggart mutant research lab moira mctaggart had built this research lab so that she could try and help her omega level reality rapping crazed brother kevin aka proteus an incredibly powerful and extremely destructive mutant while on mirror island our new favorite mutant legion was using cerebro to look for storm when the shadow king attacked him and possessed his body as well as possessing moira mctaggart and their friend valerie cooper the shadow king realized that it wouldn't be long before someone realized that it was him pulling the strings behind everything so he needed a way to try and stop all the telepaths on earth so they wouldn't find out that it was him he needed a nexus between astral and the psionic plane and this would create a disturbance that would affect all the telepaths on the planet he chose to use magneto's daughter polaris whose powers had just been altered by zaladay discovering that shadow king was on mirror island professor x sent a task force consisting of storm forge gambit banshee wolverine and jubilee to try and remove his influence from everyone affected on the island but the shadow king would possess the legion in order to try and stop them he ordered all of his slaves to hide underneath the island and was going to use legion's immense power to just wipe everything off the face of island but of course the x men were prepared and jean grey was able to use her telekinesis to protect all of the x men from legion last using jean grey as an anchor professor xavier went to the astral plane and tried to defeat shadow king but unfortunately the shadow king was way too powerful for him that's when all the x-men decided to join xavier on the astral plane and with all their will power and energy they were able to stop the shadow king on the astral plane but what they didn't know was the legion's body was still nearby and the psychic backlash of everything that happened caused legion to hurt everyone in the area This also calls Professor Xavier once again to lose the ability to walk. After an incident with a being named Onslaught, Professor Xavier lost his powers. This allowed the Shadow King to return to the physical world since the psionic plane had lost his guardian. The Shadow King decided to pose as a god named Ananasi and took over an entire African tribe. Psylocke appeared to Storm and told her that it wasn't an actual god. It was a telepath and Psylocke took Storm to the astral plane. The fake god Ananasi starts to antagonize Psylocke, calling her a Jean Grey wannabe. This causes Psylocke to act irrationally and Psylocke falls into Ananasi's trap and accidentally hits one of the villagers with her psi blade. Being struck by a psi blade causes a chain reaction that crippled the entire psionic plane itself and damages the collective subconscious of every being on the planet. The Shadow King reveals himself to be the person who's been pulling the strings this entire time and was using Psylocke to try and cripple everyone with any kind of telepathic ability so that they couldn't be able to stop him. Even people like Doctor Strange and Spider-Man were affected by this. Thinking the Shadow King has won and he has the edge over every single being on the planet, 
He decides to leave, but not before turning Sherlock into stone and watching her shatter on the ground. Crimson Dawn shows up and resurrects Sherlock, but this time he resurrects her in all black Sherlock form and gives her the ability to command psionic plane shadows. Sherlock directly takes the fight to the Shadow King, and even though she is intoxicated by her brand new powers. She remembers to remain focused and realizes that the Shadow King has left his nexus. And then he is stretching himself way too thin, trying to take over the minds of everyone on the planet. Psylocke uses the shadows of the Psy Plane and traps the Shadow King in her mind. And as long as Psylocke focuses her telepathy only on him, he can never escape. Unfortunately, this means that Psylocke can never use her telepathy ever again. Or else he will break free, and he's got a long revenge breakdown. Eventually, because of the House of Ten events caused by the Scarlet Witch, the Shadow King was released from his prison and was able to escape into an alternate reality known as Earth Six One Four One. There, he possessed their version of Professor X and used the combined power to corrupt the original X Men. and turned them into dark x men also known as shadow x he maintained a constant telepathic contact with them and forced them to do a ton of horrible things including killing all of the heroes on their world because of the scarlet witch decimation wave the shadow king was able to bring himself and his high shadow x team to earth 616 When he returns to Earth 616, he controlled a new Excalibur team, which was a brand new team of mutants, and tried to use them to kill Captain Britain. But he was stopped once again by a resurrected Psylocke. The Shadow King would later reappear with the Brotherhood of Mutants, this time consisting of Taken, Sabretooth, Mystique, the Skinless Man, the Blob from Earth 295, and the Omega Clan. The world of mutants want to destroy X Force and bring all of their secret undercover black ops mission into the real world. Of course, this was just a great excuse for the Shadow King to try and gain more power and destroy the X Men. The Shadow King actually created an illusion of Professor X and Angel to catch Psylocke off guard. He was later than expressed his disappointment at how easy it was to defeat the woman who had caged him for so long. Later, the Shadow King would try to put Evan into the Apocalypse armor. Evan was a clone of Apocalypse, and then they knew that even though Evan was trying to live a normal, happy kid life, they would use him and try to don the Apocalypse armor. The Shadow King would take over his mind, becoming even more powerful. But unfortunately, their plans had failed, and Psylocke was able to once again defeat the Shadow King and lock him away in Omega White's body. She entrusted the body to her brother Captain Britain, where he would go and place it somewhere. Unfortunately, the Shadow King's body was eventually found in the Gobi Desert. The Crimson Pirates had come across the body in stasis, and unknowingly, their telepath Bloody Bess. had released the shadow king from his prison the shadow king possessed all of the pirates except of bess and bess is able to get away and ask nightcrawler for his help when nightcrawler and bess go and try to fight the shadow king the shadow king had moved the pirates and the elf men under his control to try and stop them and even though he had so much force behind him so much power to fight the pirates and the elf men bess and sato Shadow King off his game and gave Nightcrawler a side blow and stayed there long enough for them to put the Shadow King back into the deceased Omega's body. As far as we know, he is inside of the Omega's body, still buried where he can't get out because he's locked inside of a dead body. The thing is, Shadow King burns through bodies, which is why he needs really strong people to be able to sustain him. Strong people like Legion. So the Shadow King's prison could be very well temporary again, and if he gets out, oh my God, Psylocke is gonna be the first person this dude goes after, because it's like he has been stopped by her four times now, and she literally died, came back to life, and stopped him again. It's ridiculous.
The Shadow King is incredibly powerful and whether or not he is a mutant or just a dark entity with the power of telepathy, omega level telepathy, but we need to know he has a hate on for the mutants, especially for Charles Xavier, Storm, Salon and Legion. Talking of Legion, if you haven't already seen this show, you should literally watch this show. It does horror justice without getting bogged down by the hopelessness of most modern sources. The world of Legion is terrifying, but it is not by using jump scares and chase scenes, but by building an atmosphere of claustrophobia that mimics what the main character feels. The visuals, they are just incredible for the network of the TV. The power of destruction, seamless burst, they seem very, very real. Extremely creative with the lightning of the show as well and managed the show just enough that you don't stop and wonder why it is so dark where all the important events are happening. It is the X-Men show we have been waiting for. I'm telling you, it is has that undescribable feeling of one of the grim dark X-Men from 80s and 90s and showcases extremely well implication of the world they live in. It's a whole lot of fun and crafted with care. There are no shaky cameras, overuse of blood and gore, and big guns, and there are pretty well liners and fight scenes. The fight scenes are awesome. So I would recommend all of you to watch this show. It is awesome and according to me, it is one of the best shows of Marvel yet. So that's all for today. If you like this video and want more videos like this, let me know by actually liking this video. And check out my channel and my other videos. Also, I gave a reference of Polaris in this video. If you don't really know about Polaris, here, here's the link for the Polaris video I made. And yes, don't forget to subscribe. Till then, Marvel Girl out.